When we talk about continuous delivery, it won't be long before we mention feedback. And as soon as we start talking about feedback, we we'll very quickly after that we will be talking about speed. To be effective, feedback needs to be fast. But why is that the case? And what do we mean by fast? Hi, my name is Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Today I'm going to talk about what we really mean when we say we want efficient feedback. I talk a lot about applying science and engineering principles to software development. What I really mean by that is to start applying the ideas of science and adapting them to the way in which we undertake software development to start moving it in the direction of engineering. I would argue that software development is primarily about two things. It's about learning and so we should optimize to become really great at learning and it's about managing complexity it's about organizing our work in a way so we can fit the stuff that we're working on inside the limited capacity of our heads so learning and managing complexity are at the the, the, the ground state of what our discipline requires in order to be good at learning if we want to optimize to be really great at learning we need to take iteration feedback incremental development, empirical discovery and ex an experimental approach as part of our day-to-day -day activities, the life and breadth of, of, of our discipline. If we are going to be experts at learning, as we should be, this is what it takes. These are the disciplines that we need to bring in as natural, natural parts of our development effort. In order to manage complexity, that's a different kind of stuff, but it's related. We need to think in terms of modularity, loose coupling, high cohesion, separation of concerns, information hiding or abstraction in order to be able to compartmentalise the systems that we create and work on them efficient, efficiently. All of these things require us to start thinking in smaller steps. That is fundamental to this more engineering style thinking. So feedback becomes important in that context. Working in smaller steps allows us to gather more feedback and gain deeper insight into what it is that we're actually doing. Another way to think about this is described in the book The Art of Action by Stephen Bungay. To achieve any outcome, we need to plan what we're going to do and then we need to act on that plan and then we're going to get some, some kind of outcome. So we've got a, a, a hopeful outcome, a plan, an action and an actual outcome. The trouble is that there are gaps in our understanding between the desirable outcome and the plan, the plan and the action, and the action and, and the actual outcome. So how do we manage those gaps? In his lovely model from Stephen Bungay's book, he, he, he comes up with this picture. So between outcome and plan is the knowledge gap. It's the gap between what we'd like to know versus what we actually know. And then between the plan and the action, there's the alignment gap. There's the what we'd like people to do versus what they actually do. And then finally, between actions and outcomes, there's the, the effects gap. The difference between the expected outcome, the thing that we planned for, and the actual outcome. One way of thinking about improving the speed and efficiency of feedback is that we're going to shrink these, the, the, these, the, these gaps. We can't eliminate them, but we can reduce them by going around the cycle more quickly and make each of the steps between outcome, plan and action smaller. And that's one way of thinking about improving the frequency and the utility of feedback. So let's think about cycle time. Cycle time is a measure of the efficiency of our development process. It measures from essentially having an idea to getting that idea into the hands of users in the form of use, useful software. And a good way to imagine this, to think about measuring this, is to imagine making a single line change to your production environment. How long would it take you if you followed all of the rules of your development process to achieve that single line change? So cycle time is an effective measure of the efficiency of our process. Uh, if we've got a cycle time of 103 days, then 
I'm going to get very confused messages back from, from, from my release. I'm going to be releasing vast amounts of changes into production at once. Uh, and, and some of those may be good, some of them may be bad. The quality of them may be good, the quality might be bad. Um, but even, even if they're all good, it's going to be hard to disambiguate the signals from, the, from, from, from one idea and another. It's going to be hard to tell what's going on. So there's a greater risk that some of those changes may be bad. And so there's a greater risk to the stability of my release. So if you're releasing 103 days, one of the things that I'm almost prepared to guarantee you is that you're going to be scared. You're going to be nervous on the day of release because you're taking a big risk. So one of the things that we can do in order to reduce, reduce Stephen Bungay's gaps and reduce the impact of the things that we don't know is to go around faster and as a side effect that also helps us to improve the quality of our releases because at any given point for any given release that release is less risky than the big re release that we were planning to do 103 days in the future. So here's a, here's a typical deployment pipeline. In essence there are two different phases in every deployment pipeline. There's a fast phase and there's a slower phase. Any deployment pipeline is really a, a compromise. It's, it's, it's an optimization to try and fail quickly. Ideally, we'd, I'd like the results of all of my tests instantaneously. If I could get the results of my performance test as a red squiggly line in my IDE as I was typing, that would be beautiful. But I don't know how to do that. And so instead, the deployment pipeline allows me to, to organize uh, very fast, efficient tests that give me a, a, a quick return on my commit uh, from slower, deeper tests that test more of the system and give me a different kind of signal. And then I can optimise each of those in turn. I can work on the fast cycle, move on to something new, and meanwhile, while I'm working on that new thing, in parallel, the slower cycle can be, can be running alongside it. So I'm going to optimise to get the most important feedback first and the less important feedback later. But later still means soon. We still need all of these things to be fast. In general, I recommend that you should be optimising your deployment pipeline so, you, so the fast cycle com completes in under five minutes and the whole cycle from commit to releasable thing completes in under an hour. Now, why those numbers? What, why, why, why those two numbers? The five minutes is to do with kind of human psychology. If I'm working, we, what we want is that we want to encourage our development teams to work in small, fast commits. Uh, we want each change to be simple and feedback from that change to be fast and efficient. So, typically, practicing test driven development, I'm going to write a test, I'm going to run it and see it fail, I'm going to write some code to make it pass, I'm going to run it and see it pass, I'm going to refactor both the test and the code to make them beautiful, and at that point I'm going to commit. This probably means that if I'm doing well during a working day, I'm probably committing once every 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to be committing multiple times throughout the day. If I'm committing that often, then if it takes more than five minutes to get a result, that's going to start annoying me. It's going to start putting a barrier between me and the desire to commit. I'm going to save up my commits and I'm going to commit more slowly. And we don't want that. And so optimising to have under five minutes is just about long enough so you can kind of sit there, wait for the results and, and, and not get too bored before you're happy to move on to something else. So five minutes is about the limit of patience. If a, a more perfect answer is under 90 seconds. Under 90 seconds feels almost free, but, but that's hard for some kinds of systems. The hour-long commit is slightly different, but still based on, uh, on the practicalities of the situation. Let's play the, the thought experiment through. Let's imagine that we're working in a team where we, uh, our, our build is done overnight. So if you, are, if, you are building and releasing, uh, if you are building your change and evaluating your change overnight, 
That's pretty good for, compared to many teams in the world. But if as a developer I commit a change and then I don't find out until the following day whether I broke something and then I immediately commit a fix for the thing that I broke, I'm not going to find out that I fixed it until the day after that. So that's a three day cycle. What that means is that the, even for trivial simple uh, errors there's going to be a long wait time between identifying the defect and my ability to have fixed it. Uh, and what the, the outcome of that is that teams that do overnight builds are usually living with 5 or 10% of their tests always failing. And so the signal is blurred. If you want to work in a way so that your tests are always green, that they're always passing, which is what we're trying to achieve in continuous delivery, we're trying to work so our software is always in a releasable state and use the uh, validation of our test to indicate that releasable state, then that means that we need to bring the time scale within the working day. So let's now imagine that I'm getting feedback in two hours instead of one hour. If I make a mistake now, I've probably got two more attempts during the working day to fix that, to fix that problem. If I can get an answer back in an hour, I've probably got five or six attempts after I make a mistake during a working day. The difference between those two is that the teams with, that, that can get feedback in under an hour are much, much more able to stay on top of, a failing, of, of mistakes and keep their build working all of the time. There's a relationship between the rate at which we get feedback uh, and the ability to keep the software in a, releasable, in a releasable state. And taking that seriously is important. I'll give you a little bit of a, an example. I, I once worked in, a, in an organisation uh, that built trading software and they'd been working, writing automated tests for a long time. They had a large C++ build and they were doing overnight builds. Uh, their, their build and their test execution took nine and a bit hours to run all of those things. Uh, when I joined, they'd been running this process for about three or four years. And one of the developers who'd been with there through that time said, through all of that time, uh, only on three occasions had all of the tests passed. And so it was very difficult to understand what to release and what not to release. We did a lot of work, we did a lot of experimentation, we looked into build systems, parallelizing the build, we bought some bigger hardware, we did all sorts of things to optimize the build. Um, to cut a long story short, we ended up reducing the cycle time for the fast cycle. We managed to get down to 12 minutes. We couldn't achieve the five minutes with this big C++ build uh, without re-architecting the system. But, but with the existing system, we managed to get back to, down to 12 minutes. We got the slow cycle tests down to 40 minutes. For the first two weeks after we released that build, there were three occasions when all of the tests passed. And from the following two weeks and forever after while I was at the organisation, every day we had at least one release candidate where all of the tests had passed and we could choose that release candidate to put into production. So just speeding things up, just the efficiency of our feedback cycle has a direct impact with no other changes on the quality of our output. In summary, how do we make software that we can be confident in? has less risk of breaking what went before and maximises our opportunities to learn. We work in a series of small, fast steps. We validate every one of these small changes frequently, multiple times per day and optimise the whole so that we can get a definitive signal from the point of commit to the point of release that this thing is safe to go. We want to be able to answer the question is this thing releasable? And we want to get an answer to that question multiple times per day. Thank you very much for watching.